We'll now look at the probability of dependent events. First, a reminder of what it means for events to be dependent. Dependent events are one where the occurrence of the first event affects the probability of the second. Therefore, if we know our first event occurred, our second probability is going to change. And these are what we want to look out here. Before we can define the probability of dependent events, we need to discuss conditional probability. The conditional probability is the probability that an event B occurs after event A has already occurred. And this is denoted by the probability of B given, which we represent by this bar, and then A. This affects our probability of dependent events mainly because our probability of B is going to change depending on what happens in our event A. Therefore, we need this conditional probability. We assume event A happens and we figure out what the probability of B is after that. We can now define our multiplication rule for dependent events. If we have two dependent events, A and B, then the probability of both A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So we multiply the probability of A happening by our conditional probability of B. And sometimes you may, may see this using our intersection notation, A intersect B, which is another way to represent the ands. And then everything else would stay the same. So let's look at some examples. Let's suppose we draw two cards without replacement. So we draw one and then draw the next one. What's the chance that we'll draw two kings? Well, we start with the first one. There are four kings in a deck of 52. And then the second one is our conditional probability. Our deck no longer has 52 cards because we've removed one. So we're down to 51 cards. We also assume that our first event happened, so we've already removed one of the kings, which means there's only three kings left. So 4 over 52 times 3 over 51, which gives us 0 0.0045 or 0.45%. This time, we'll once again draw without replacement, and we're going to draw three cards. We want to know the probability of getting an ace, a king, and a queen. Well, there are four aces in the deck out of a total of 52 cards. For our second event, we've removed one of the aces, so we're down to 51 cards, but there are still four kings. So here's our ace and our king. For the queen, we've removed two cards, so we're down to 50 cards, but there is still four queens since we haven't removed any of those. Once we multiply this, we get 0 .0048 or 0.048%. This time we'll look at the probability of drawing a heart, then a diamond, and then a club. Well, if we start with a heart, we know there are 13 out of a total of 52 cards. For the next one, we'll remove one of the cards, so now we're down to 51 cards, and this time we want a diamond and there are still 13 diamonds in the deck. For the last one, we want a club. We're down to 50 cards, and there are still 13 clubs since we haven't removed any yet. And once we multiply this, we get 0 0.0166 or 1.66%. And as our last example, we'll look at the probability of drawing three spades. We know there are 13 spades in the deck out of a total of 52 cards. For our second card, we've removed one, so we're down to 51, and we removed a spade, so we're down to 12 spades. At the third card, we've removed two cards, so we're down to 50, and we've removed two spades, which puts us down to 11. This gives us a probability of 0 0.0129 or 1.29%.